Greetings my dear ones, it is currently 1.36 a.m. Um, I know, but I was really wanting to do this with you. I think I'm going through a season of uh, midnight prayers, so let's do it together. So I just wanted to give us today, or tonight, a briefing about the memorare. I'm sorry, I'm preparing for my night, so one of my um, routines for night is just to, um, I've got some meat in my ears, but don't worry about it. So one of the things that I wanted to speak to us about was, is the memorare. So the memorare is a prayer attributed to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady, the Mother of God, the one chosen by the Heavenly Father, who had been waited for, who creation people were waiting for for 200 years, um, whether she was recognized or not, but whom we acknowledge in the Christian Catholic tradition. So it is a prayer written to her by um, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And I happen to live in St. Bernard's parish this year for our patron feast of St. Bernard. I did not do um, a video at church. I actually forgot my laptop at home and I thought, okay Lord, We'll swing with it. I already have a video from a few years ago. So, um, it came to my heart. Let, let's speak about the memorare. Um, so, it is a, a prayer that was composed by Saint Bernard, and I love reciting it. Um, I've known it from my childhood, but I never knew when I was much younger that it was a prayer written by St. Bernard until I joined St. Bernard's parish. Uh, now, in the original version, the place where everybody says stand is actually kneel. You know, I used I used to pray it in French, so whether it is in French or in any language, the original prayer says um, to kneel. So uh, how St. Bernard came to write this prayer, I will put a link uh, in the video for you to have access to it to know the story. It is a beautiful story. So as we about to kick off the second hour of the night, let us join the many monks around the world or the nuns who rise at this time of the night and do the midnight prayers or pray for the night. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection and brought thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I kneel. Sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition. In thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
So one more thing I wanted to share with us is the tradition of the veil. In many European traditions, um, or in the extraordinary Catholic right, the wearing of the veil is very particular in the sense where it is, um, you know, it has a certain shape, a certain format. But actually, in the African tradition, especially in the Church of Benin, Benin Republic, where I was raised, Benin, B-E-N-I-N, um, that um, invitation of St. Paul to women wearing the veil is blended within the culture. So here is what happens. Um, A woman may not wear the veil as we see it um, in the uh, with a specific shape or format. The one thing that you can see her do is um, she worries with her style. Because we are a very creative culture, so we do a lot of fabrics. And you will see in my fashion line, you know, it transpires as well. So she may decide that she will put something like that on her head. And just go on. Or she may decide that she will style her hair in a specific way, you know, and go on. And I will actually link uh, uh, one of my fellow sisters from my native land uh, who shows how we do the head wrapping. And you will see as well in one of my videos, I put the link, uh, how I had a head wrap, because what happened was, Often time, the type of clothing that we have, nothing from many pieces. So you have the upper part of the body, you have the lower part of the body. So it often comes if you're matching the one with the head. So if the woman will actually do the upper part of the body. The woman who goes to church. Take it. She will style herself like that, something like that, and go to church. So for her, it is her way to do her feeling when she's going to church, or you know. She's wearing something that we call a boo-boo, like long pieces. Comes with a matching part. She put it like me. Or she wraps it. type of style is often seen in the north of the country because we have Catholics, Muslims, Protestants, um, people who are into ancestral practices. So when you come, you have lots of marriages between Catholics and Muslims. So when you have someone who comes from a inter-religious family, oftentimes she might wear her veil like a hijab, or she might not. 
many of my generation was just yeah. it depends where they are going so that's how the feeling happens for us in uh, our culture I hope that gives you a bonus of how the feeling happens uh, from one part of the world to the other part of the world so if you ever see um, uh, a being in or for you know someone who's going to church this is actually her way of honoring the, the tradition of the veil so don't necessarily expect her to put uh, the type of veils that we see in the European or North American culture before thinking that she is um, coming in an appropriate way to the Lord. So I hope that helps you understand the bridges. I hope this is a good bridge for you between cultures. Yeah. I hope that helps you understand how things go from one place to the other. Thank you very much and see you in another video a little bit of church history for us